one more health warning, and that's that writing in itself, it shouldn't be an aim. Leon Trotsky said about revolutionaries, he said, you have to be able to write without becoming a writer, to speak without becoming a, an orator, to organise without being merely uh, an organiser, to be a trade unionist without becoming a syndicalist. In other words, any form of specialism or compartmentalisation will weaken you because the specialisation cuts you off from the source of, uh, of, of, uh, of writing. So um, let's just talk about what that is. You see, to write, you have to have something to say, pretty obvious, um, but where do you get the something from? And the only way you can begin when you sit down in front of the screen or sit down with the pen and have sufficient motivation to actually begin to write or want to write, you have to have something to say, and you only get something to say from experience. It's the only way, it's the only thing that any of us have. But there are different levels of experience. There's your personal experience that you saw it, smelt it, heard it, whatever. You know, that in some way your five senses received this information pers at a personal experience. There's indirect experience, which is that you've heard one way or another of somebody else's experience that either historically you read that there was a demonstration in 1640 in the middle of, uh, of, of London, or you heard what happened on the other side of the square uh, in a demonstration where you were on this uh, side of, of the square. Indirect experience transmitted to you in written, spoken, film form from other people. And then there's condensed experience, which is that we can see a pattern in what other people have seen or heard or said that we can compare the Egyptian Revolution to the Russian Revolution or to the Spanish Revolution, that there's differences and similarities between, uh, between these things, that what happens to me at work today has been happening to my friends and my family and people like me, not just this year, not just this last decade, but for centuries. In other words, there's a pattern that emerges from experience, and theory, all theory, is really condensed experience. It's an expression of what happens, uh, but in an abstracted way. That we're, it's not just that I had a bad day at work, but we're all having a bad day at work and for these, uh, and for these, and for these reasons. Now really, when you write, you've got to try and combine all these things. You know, when I write from Tahir Square, you know, all right, as I did during the course of the, the last week, all right, I was on, I was at the, the Talat Harb end of, of Tahir Square. Was the same thing happening down the Egyptian Museum end of Tahir Square? Without knowing that, you know, I mean, my personal experience is standing around there are of interest, but was this the character of the whole demonstration or just what was happening in the corner that I was in? How do you compare it with the demonstrations that happened at the beginning of the Egyptian Revolution or about demonstrations in other revolutions? Now, those three things, my experience at one end of the square, somebody else's experience at the other end of the square, and a comparison between this demonstration and demonstrations in other revolutions. That's those three elements. And if you're to make any sense of the experience or for it to transmit itself in a generally useful way, any article, even short articles, have to have those, uh, those elements in it. Um, then when you've got the experience and you've analysed it and you've decided what you want to say, why you want to say it, that you're inspired or motivated or appalled or in some way the experience has driven you to want to put it on, uh, to put it